Sports Matters TV. Okay, guys, welcome to a Sports Matters special. Um, you know, for years, what we've been on about doing a dart show, and um, we, we're finally over the hurdle. Uh, I've been lucky enough to have you know, you know, the, some of the greats on over the years. Um, and yet again, this dart show that we're going to do, it's officially going to launch in October. But no better way to pre-start the dart show with a dart and sensation, uh, Ireland's first ever world master. For years and years and years, uh, we waited for a world master champion. 2014 was the year where Robin Byrne became uh, the world master champion. Uh, first of all, Robin, those things look. It's been a it's been a shite two years for everyone, especially in Ireland and Dublin and Cork. Um, obviously, a lot of online darts, which it's good and bad. I I, I didn't really like it. Um, but how's things with you? First of all, how are you keeping? Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, no bother at all. Same old, same old. This stage with this COVID and stuff. Looking forward to a couple of restrictions easing and getting back out again. Definitely. Now, look, it's been it's been a unknown territory for all of us. We're so used to our pub leagues and you know traveling all around Ireland for you know INBO tournaments and you know playing the local tournaments and stuff. It's obviously been a shy two years. Look, how has it affected you? First of all, because you're so used to playing you know with big crowds, you know great tournaments around the country. And then you find yourself playing online, which is good and bad. Like, you know, I tried it. I didn't like it. You know what I mean? I was more more paranoid about other people cheating or, you know, stuff going around with connections and stuff. But uh, how did you find it first of all? Um, yeah, obviously missed the real life darts a lot. Like, I'd be playing two, three times a week and then at the weekend, every weekend nearly. So it was a big shock to the system, not leaving the house, never mind, not playing darts. But I played quite a lot of the online stuff, to be fair. I was playing, I'd say, at one stage, I was playing nearly five and six nights a week just for something to do. Like. Yeah. But I found it all right. You have to just say to yourself, well, if they're cheating, they're cheating. They're cheating themselves, leave them off. Like You can't dwell on it like because it's going to happen and you have to just forget about it. Yeah. But apart from that, it was, it was good practice. It kept the arm in. I suppose it was some type of competitive practice at some stage, but it's not the real thing. Yeah, I see a couple of your, your online games. Obviously, you're playing, you know, the well-established players, um, which is good. You know what I mean? There was a lot of big tournaments mm. you played in, which are actually on YouTube right now. But obviously, it's good to keep the hand in. It's essential. What did you make of this? Uh, you know, just remember this online darts thing. It was called Teco or whatever it was. And there was fellas hitting nine darts against people. It was just, it was scandalous. You know what I mean? It was crazy. Yeah. No, I don't know. I wasn't into any of that. Like, I just, to be honest, like, I tried to play things that I kind of trusted people in to an extent. And then if someone said you want to play on stream, I was 100% on stream straight away because people aren't going to teach you if you think other people are watching as well. That's true. So, yeah, but in, like, when I was playing tournaments against people I didn't know, you kind of have to just have that trust. Yeah. And... If you don't have that trust, there's no point in playing online whatsoever. But even at that, it's kind of, it ran its course as well with me. Like at one stage, I was kind of loving it because I was playing so many times a week. I was winning. I was playing players that I wouldn't get to play week in, week out. Like I played Lisa Ashton online. I played a lot of the women in England online, which was a like, very good standard. And then I was playing a lot of the Irish women's tournaments and stuff like that. So... It was good in that way, but then another way, then it just ran its course. And at the minute, I'm just playing one league in America at the minute. Yeah. Uh, Florida League, just for the sake of something different, because it got a bit boring for me at one stage. Like, you were just doing the same thing against the same people every week. So when certain tournaments ended, I just said, oh, come here, I'll give it a break for a while. And I hadn't played for a couple of weeks. And one of the American fellas asked me, will I play? And I just said, yeah, go on then, something different. And... Yeah. Had me thrown, so I was like, right, that'll do. That sounds good. Now, obviously, look, I remember, look, first of all, you know, you, you made such a big name for yourself in the youths. I always remember, you know what I mean, being in the youths, obviously going to the mains, and I, I found the transition hard at the time, but how did Dirt start for you first day? Um, my dad plays, so he would have been playing for, like, Dublin and all local tournaments and international, like, national tournaments from when I was a kid, like, and he'd be practicing here and I was only probably like four, five and I'd be saying, oh, please can I throw, please can I throw and he used to be like, oh, Robin, like you're too small, you're too small and eventually then he'd say, right, you, when I'm finished you can throw the last three darts in the board and I was like, right, so that settled me for a while and then I'd sit there while he was practicing and 
I was like watching what he was doing and then eventually that wasn't enough so uh, he used to write down 20 finishes on a piece of paper and put a smarty on each finish and when he took out the finish I got to eat the smarty <laughs> and that kept me going for a bit longer but eventually he just said right here's a set of darts go ahead look and within about a year or two I was wanting to play tournaments then I was only like six and I was entering youth competitions <laughs> And like, like this, you know what I mean? The rest is history. We know how good you are. We know what you've done. Um, when did you realise that you were good? Because look, I, as you say, I was always, I suppose, as a dare player, you know, you'd always keep an eye on, on the youths and, you know what I mean, the good players. But it was easy to see earlier on in your career, you were quite good. See, when I was about, I'd say I was only 10 or 11, to be honest, maybe even younger, I started playing with the Dublin youths. And I was on the B team at the start. And I think when you go from the B team to the A team as a youth, like that's such a big thing, especially when you're so young, you're only a kid. Like. Yeah. So I think that was when I was like, right, I'm obviously getting better at this because like, I'm moving up. And then eventually I win in games for the A team. And then we won like four or five All-Ireland youths in a row. Like. Yeah. And it was such a good team all around. But like, I was going into win games and finals and stuff like that like, as a youth. And I think it just developed from there. Like, once you get the competitiveness in you and you like the game and you're good at it, you just run with that. Like, I think you just, you get the bug, don't you? So, yeah. It's so real. And, like, lucky enough, I'm, I'm not blowing my trumpet. I like to throw it out there. But I was lucky enough to play for Cork for a number of years as a youth. Uh, I played in an all Ireland final against Ross Common. Uh, and I went to number one. So, mm. I played against Sean Fleming, who was number one in Ireland at the time. And it was one all. I had 47 left. I bossed it twice. Imagine hitting shuttle 19, going for an 18 or a 7, and bossing it. But how did you find the pressure as a dare player, first of all? Obviously, look, you've been in some crucial games as a youth player, and you know what the pressure is like. So how did you find it, first of all? And how did you deal with as it? As a youth, I didn't feel pressure. Like, you didn't, like, it just went over my head, I think, as a youth. It was just a game, like. And I think when you're a youth, you have no fear, like, especially I was started when I was so young. That by the time I was like 12, 13, 14, I had eight years experience, like whereas other people only have that when they're in their 20s and 30s. But like I didn't, I used to win tort, which in the youths there's five players. Like I used to win to win the game nine times out of ten because we used to have like such good players that we'd nine out times out of ten we'd be winning our first two games. So like even in All Ireland finals, I think twice in All Ireland finals I went in tort to win it. Yeah. Won it twice. Won the the Regency youth a couple of times in tour. Like, won the Regency doubles with Wayne Dunn as a youth. Just didn't feel that type of pressure as a youth. Like, never, never bothered me whatsoever. You're you're a rare breed when it comes to stuff like that. So, and like we we have to speak. Look, the World Masters. Obviously, as a youth player, you knew what the World Masters was. Did you realize going into that World Masters the year you won it that you know you could have possibly been the first person from Ireland to win that? See, that had been, that was the October, and in the July of that year, so it was like three or four months before, I had played the Europe Cup. So, before that Europe Cup, I hadn't a clue. Like, I had never played international before. I was 17 at that stage, and I still hadn't played an international game. Or, like, I didn't really, I never tried to make the Ireland team. Yeah. I never went to the Ireland Dios or anything. And then, I think it was at like an All Ireland or something. One of the officials was like, Robin, you should really go to them rankings. Like, you can play for Ireland next year. And I could see who was playing for Ireland at the time, and I was like, I'm better than them. Like, but I didn't like know. Like, when they were going away, they weren't winning that. So I was like, oh, maybe the standard's really good over there. Like, I didn't have a clue. Yeah. But I had only ever played against the boys over here. I never played a, 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 like a woman or a g girl until I actually went to the Europe Cup. So I was just so used to playing like Dean Finn, Liam Gallagher, like John Seagrave, the youth at the time. I was just used to playing them week in, week out. And when I went then to the Europe Cup, I played the doubles first. And I was like, the standard isn't what I thought it was going to be. Like, I was like, they're good, solid players, but I was like, I can beat this. And it wasn't then until I played the singles. Like, I won my group, won every game in the group. And when it went on to the knockout stages then, like, obviously the standard got a bit higher. And as it went on, the standard was getting, like, a bit harder, a bit harder. But, like, I was taking out Tumplos finishes for fun. I was, like, my scoring was there. And I just kind of knew then that I could beat them. Like, so when we won the doubles, I said, right, if I'm not going winning that, I can definitely win the singles. Like, yeah. So when I won the doubles and the singles and we won the overall and all, that was huge. Like, that was a huge confidence boost because I didn't realise the standard 
that I had been and the standard that I was at compared to the rest. Yeah. yeah. So when we went to the World Masters then, I knew the standard probably would be better because I knew there'd be more players from England, players from the US and players from like Canada and Australia and places like that that obviously weren't in your pub, so it was kind of an unknown entity there. But I still knew I was clearly going to be good enough, but it was a matter of doing it. Yeah. But on the day of the qualifying for the final, I played like really solid, really well all day. And then when I was playing Bo Graves in the final, like that was a complete unknown entity. She was 10 years old. And all I was saying was, don't get beat by a 10 year old on TV. Like, but like little did we all know how good Bo was going to be. But at the time I was like, please don't get beat by a 10 year old on telly. And I hadn't seen her play. I hadn't watched one of her games all day. I didn't know who she was. And then, uh, I was just happy that, and we were practicing backstage actually beforehand, and there was like a board just behind the stage before we got called out, and she was hitting everything, and I was like, oh no, she's going to be a wonder kid, like I was like, this is going to be a disaster, and she was hitting tone 140 tone, and I was like, but then obviously at 10 years old, when we went on stage, she got a bit nervous, and I was like, right, thank God for that. Yeah. But I was happy to get there. Like it was a huge achievement at the time. Like first world masters and first European medals for Ireland it was just great. Like it was huge, and it's a long time coming because look, I, as you say, there was a stage back in in the early two thousands where they'd send over only one U player and stuff. And I know Keith Rooney came very close in the men's. In the yeah, U- Keith got to the final. Yeah, I think he narrowly lost three two. But it's just it's 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 remarkable. Like, what really annoyed me at the time was when he won it. Obviously, there was, there was, you know, tabloids were putting stuff up, but this should have been a lot bigger across Ireland. Like, RTE News should have had him a breaking news mm. sign across the screens. Um, obviously, it was great for you, the family. And, and what was it like, obviously, you know, finally becoming, you know, the War Master Champion? Yeah, it was huge at the time. Like, it was, for me, it was huge. Because I was, that was my last year as a youth. I was 17. I was at the qualifying. And... I won the your cup and I won the world master. So I literally I like and it was one chance. So it was do or die, like you win it or you're never gonna win it. So for that reason it was a very, very good achievement for me. Like and then obviously all the family and everyone like that, everyone was delighted, like but I know what you mean with the media and stuff. There was no huge reaction, like there was the odd story printed here and there but I think it was more within the Darton community was a big reaction but outside of that was unknown yeah no it pisses me off it's you know what I mean like it, it's similar to Katie Taylor she doesn't get the recognition she deserves through the Irish media and I no. always remember just you know what I mean sending off because at the time I was doing a lot of radio stuff and obviously we had a plug on our side but it was just it, it, like it was good but it should have been a lot better you know so uh Look, when you become, you know what I mean, the women's world master champion and the future world champion, I'm sure it'll be blown up. Um, Hopefully, yeah. <laughs> uh, it definitely will, it definitely will. So, obviously, look, we, we know restrictions were in place. Things are looking up. There's a, a bright future ahead. Uh, the WDF are obviously replacing the BDO. Obviously, mm. Robin, that looks bright and it looks like good things are coming, you know, for the future. Yeah, see, be- just before COVID, I'd never done the WDF tour before. I'd done the odd tournament here. I've been to the Welsh Open a couple of times, been Northern Irish Open, obviously went to Clarny for the Irish Open. Been to a couple of others, like, but went to the Isle of Man before and stuff. But it was only, like, one tournament a year or two tournaments a year just for the sake of going to a tournament. Like, I wasn't chasing ranking points or anything. So, the January that year, I was after going to the... Irish Open and the Northern Irish Open at that stage and I said right I'll give this a go this year sure I might as well had a couple of extra days off work and that's why I was like right this this will be sound so I had booked the Danish Open I'd booked the German Open I had booked like I had about six or seven events booked weekends booked of what would have been gold events like all the every single gold event I had booked and I was like right I'm gonna give this a go and then COVID hit and every single event got cancelled so that didn't help yeah. But now it's kind of like, will you book an event or not? Because things still aren't going ahead. Like you're still seeing events getting cancelled and stuff like that. So I haven't actually booked anything apart from Killarney now at this stage. Yeah. And I think I'm just going to leave it and start fresh next year if all restrictions are lifted and everything like that. Because I do want to give the WDF or BDO at the time, but WDF a go because like it would be nice to play in a world, ladies world championship and stuff like that. And like it gets your name out there as well if you're playing in world championships and stuff like that kind of gets your face on tv or 
just get your name out there in general. So I would like to do that hopefully next year but at the minute it's just concentrating on the women's series that was played at the weekend for the four six events and then the next six events are in three weeks yeah. so I'm looking forward to that and it was very hard to play like even just the weekend after not playing so long like it's very hard just to feel comfortable again playing in real life but I mean I'm looking forward and then obviously have Killarney then coming up and then hopefully lo local leagues and local tournaments and stuff will start again, get plenty of match practice in before next year and that's kind of the only goal you can have for now just because you don't know if restrictions are going to go back in place or anything. Well, I sure hope not. I'm glad you brought up the, the Super Series. Look, it's, it, it looks to me as the PDC are definitely working on something for the future. Um, obviously, we've seen Fallon, like, you know, she's doing some incredible stuff. Lisa Ashton, she's incredible. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it's, it's, it's probably safe to say that the PDC might do a World Championships in a couple of years. I think they're definitely trying to build something. We're seeing the entrants are pretty big. Um, I know, you know what I mean, the PDC is in good hands. But obviously, it, it's, it's, you know what I mean, the game is changing. Obviously, we've seen a lot of changes over the years. It seems to me now that the women are actually getting the recognition they deserve. Would I be right to say that? You know, it's, it's slowly coming. Yeah, I think so. But, like, at the weekend, Lisa and Fallon won three events each. So it shows that there is that gap there in standard. And if the women do want a tour or a world championship or whatever, there's, they're going to have to lift the standard and reduce the gap between the top two, three, maybe including Dita, because Dita had done very well in all the events. And last year she qualified. But they're going to have to reduce the gap standard. Like, yeah. like the you have the best and then the rest would want to add, including myself, like would want to add five to 10 points onto your average and like, have that ability to take out checkouts when people are sitting on a finish and people miss going and punish them. Like, whereas, like I played Fallon the weekend, I averaged 84. It was my best game of the weekend. I got absolutely smashed 4 nil. I got one dart at a double in the whole game. I got one dart off 105 in the first leg and didn't even get to see another double after that. So even when I was putting pressure on, I was hitting ton, ton, ton every leg. I was putting pressure on her. She could just swallow that up. It didn't bother her whatsoever. Yeah. And I think... The rest have to learn how to do that. But I think, I don't think there will be a, a women's world championship within the PDC. I think the PDC are a, if you're good enough, you're good enough, full stop. Like, you're not good enough as a woman. You're a good enough darts player, which I appreciate. I actually kind of like that. Like, if you want to go play women's darts, go and play in the BDO and the WDF. But if you want to play darts, the PDC is where you are, like... That's why I think, like, you kind of have to have that mentality if you're going to play within PDC events. But they're giving you the opportunity. You have to take it. They're giving you opportunity to play in major competitions, world championships and grand slams. Like, people will bite your, hand, bite your hand off for that. And if you don't put yourself in a position and take the opportunity, that's up to you. Like, awesome. I think... It's a huge... Like, the way you said that's perfect. There's no other way of saying it the way you've said it's perfect. It's, it's true. 100% true. Yeah. And like, there was 70 entrants the weekend for six events for a thousand euro, a uh, thousand pounds for winning every event, 60 grand over 12 events and there's 70 entries. If you opened up a men's tournament for a spot in a Grand Slam and a spot in a World Championship, you'd have a thousand entries easy. Yeah. Like, I think that more women need to get involved. They need to take that chance. Like, you're not gonna, they're not going to keep giving us opportunities if we don't enter and take them. Even if you go and you enter two or three events a day, you don't have to enter all of them. Like, yeah. If you go and give it a go, like, what's the worst that can happen? You lose four rounds. Like, nobody cares. Nobody's looking at you. Nobody's judging that you... Everyone like, will say, well, fair play, you gave it a go. you done more than the people who didn't go. Do you know what I mean? Well, that's like, true. You, you, you have to take the opportunities if they're going to keep giving us them. Like, every year, I've seen a stat the other day, and every year since they've offered a spot in the Women's World Championships, the entries have decreased. Like, that makes absolutely no sense to me. Like, if you entered the first year, why are you not entering three or four years on? It's true. We see more Fallon done. You know, we, we know Fallon won two games in, in, in the World Championships. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. But you see Fallon the week before the Women's Series getting to the final of the Nordic Masters. If that doesn't inspire you to enter, what will? Like? Yeah, yeah. And she should have beaten Van Gogh. I think she only made one little mistake. And I wouldn't even call yeah. it a mistake. On an, on an average day, that's not a mistake. I think she had one bad score. 
and I think mm. he went up eight, seven in or something like that. Yeah, I'd say Van Gorn had a farty part in that game. I'd say he knew. Yeah, he was definitely. Good. No, definitely. Come here, what Fallon's doing at the minute though is brilliant. Like it's it's great to watch and it's great to have something saying, well, if she can do it, why not? Like if people have something to look towards, like even for example, I won the World Masters in twenty fourteen. Katie Sheldon went on and done it four or five years later. Like if someone looks at it and says, well, it's been done before, why can't I do it now? Like that's what I think when I look at Fallon. I I don't think oh. I can't be her. I look at her and say, well, if she can do it, then I can give it a go. Like, yeah. well, so that's, the, that's the mindset you need. That's the mindset you need. We yeah. have to ask you a couple of fire questions, right? So who was your inspiration as a dart player? So look, we're going to say in Ireland and then, of course, worldwide player. So who was your two favourite players? One in Ireland and one worldwide. So um, world star. Within Ireland, probably like, I'd say Mick McGowan or someone like that. Because not just because he played PDC around, it's just his attitude, and yeah. I like the way he plays, and I like his attitude towards it when he is playing. Yeah. And my favourite player is Michael Van Gerwen, but it wouldn't be even for his start either. It's more his attitude and the way he is with fans, and the, like he's still humble after winning absolutely everything on the planet. Like no, he, he can still walk out and just go up and take pictures of fans and autographs and stuff. I just appreciate that. I think it's good. Yeah, his mindset's fantastic. Even after a loss, he'll always shake the hands. He doesn't really sulk. He might yeah, he's always, you. after an, after a game, even if he loses a really bad game or whatever, he'll always say, well done, and never just walks off stage or anything. Like He's very like humble, even though he has no reason to be. Yeah, no, he's, he's definitely one of the greatest. Um, we have to ask you, what's the longest... You know, so we, we all practice, but, you know... Over the years, you know, you might put in the like you know, an hour or four hours. Can you recall the longest you've ever practiced in one day? Over all years? I wouldn't say very long. I wouldn't be a heavy practicer. Probably really? two hours. Two hours. <laughs> never, never when you were 14 or 15, you know, five, six hours, no? Wasn't one of them, no. Never was. An hour a day is what I do now. An hour a day is what I've done then. And I just... I think after an hour, if you're playing well, put them down. After an hour, if you're not playing well, put them down. And just set it out. Right, I'm going to play for an hour. That's what I'll do. Love it. Love it. How close have you come to hitting the nine there? Ten. Hmm. Interesting. That's good. That's very good. Yeah. Um, what's your favourite practice routine? So, look, we all have the routines of going around the board or, you know, trying to hit yeah. numbers. What would you... What would so, you me and my dad practice together. So... We'll do one two one in nine between us, so from one two one to one four one, and then that's just to kind of warm up. Like it doesn't be serious. Like it's just to kind of get the arm down. Then we'll usually do one oh one force to five in six yeah. against each other, and then we'll do a game. I don't know. I think it's called Killers or Lives or something. Yeah, killer, yeah, yeah. yeah. Pub game, like yeah. so you can you include the rings and everything outside the board and all but they like, follow on like that I think that's what it's called follow on oh, we'll play like that maybe two or three times and we might do like highest score or Bob's 27 and things like that we try and change it up a bit but it usually follows some type of routine like that yeah no it's a great game now we have to ask you if it's a tricky question there's probably a couple right but you've taken a lot of big scalps over the years right can you recall your best dart match ever Obviously, the War Masters is, you know, it's a big achievement, but, you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm trying to think, like, best game the best I probably best played. Best like. game, yeah. Most of the best games I played, I lose. Um, I'm trying to think of one I might have actually won. Like, like it's, for example, the weekend there, played Fallon, played down my skin, lost. Yeah. Like, probably um, in Japan at the World Cup, I was playing Makuru at the time, was like the year before she won her first world title, I think. Yeah. Or maybe she was just gone world champion one or the other, but I was playing Makuru anyway, and I think it was like the last 16, and I went like two or three nil up, and she came back, and I won in the last leg beside her. That was a good game, and like I was out there playing really well. Yeah. But also the doubles of that World Cup, me and Caroline Brian, we beat... Um, Holland so it was like Anka Zilstra and I think it could have been Eileen in the semi-finals and 
no matter what Caroline left me, it was gone. Like, I took out 125. I took out, like, 90 on the ball. Took out, like, every single shot. I was like, we're winning this semi. Like, yeah. so that would have been another good performance. But, yeah. Good achievement. I love that. And we have to ask you, look, you know, we know we know death sometimes is related to a, to a drink game, right? So we all like, you know, to have a drink and stuff. When I packed in the drink 13 years ago, my darts went tits up. It went down, right? So I went from winning so much to winning nothing, right? Do you like to have a drink when you're playing darts or you, does, does it bother you? I don't drink when I'm playing now. There you go. So, never yeah, have. Um, I think it's because I started since I was like so young. I just never picked it up. Like I was, I was good and didn't need it when I was a youth so I just continued when I was playing also I don't like to have an excuse yeah. so do you know that I didn't have enough I had too much yeah. the next morning oh I'm dying today from yesterday I don't like to have an excuse so if I have none every time you have no reason to be bothered by it I love it we had a big debate last week about the drink and you know, all the lads said you know some I need drink I don't need drink and, and it was more than to like 85% of the votes saying, you know, I prefer to have drink when I'm playing. But I'm glad you said that. Because I try. Yeah, to- most people would, but I just never have. It never has bothered me. Like, I would drink after that. So I would drink otherwise, but I just don't drink when I'm playing ever. Like. Yeah, no, well, that's good. That's a good thing. Your first yeah. dart in memory, can you remember? So, as a child or as a kid, can you remember? Maybe you were at an event, maybe you've seen a dart game on TV. Can you remember what it was? The first one I remember going to like not not playing but going to it was going to City West to see Garrett Gray playing in wow. the Grand Prix I, I like I'd, lo- I'd love to know what year that was because I'd say I was about like six seven maybe yeah I was young but I remember and um, I got a Phil Taylor's autograph he was there and I got a PDC yo-yo that's that was the memory I have of going to that event but playing probably um I always remember, do you remember Killarney years ago? Do you remember when the Pro Tours were on in Killarney? You see, the I'd, greatest games yeah, of my life. It used to be unbelievable. I, I'd played a couple of like local events before then, and I played like the George Bourne that, like Alan Bourne runs in Dublin. I played up, like, up in the White House and stuff like that. They would have been very localised. But um, my first like probably big competition would have been going to Killarney years ago, playing in the youths. Like, it was just so unreal. It was... They it were, was so good. It's fair to say that it's kind of back. So, clearly, it was two years ago they they done it, and I think everyone was blown away. It was actually bigger yeah. than the PDC ones because the crowds were incredible. It was just like the old times. Obviously, yeah. looking forward to, to the return of Clarny in November. Tip wood, all goes well, and there's no more restrictions. Fingers crossed. Hopefully. Like, I think it's just what all the dark players need, isn't it? Just that trip to Killarney. Like, yeah. I don't know anybody who's not looking forward to it. Like, it's just, it was such a good event when it was ran last time. And I think we all got a taste of it and then it got taken away from us so soon. Like, we were only getting into it. But I do think, I hopefully it goes ahead. And if it does, it's going to be a very good event, I think. I'm looking forward to how many entries in. So, and fingers crossed it goes ahead. Well, we're all looking forward to that one, definitely. Now, we have to speak, Robin. Do you have any sponsors you want to give a shout-out to? Look, I know there's people that will always kind of help you along the way, but obviously it's nice to have new sponsors on board. So if anyone's watching and you want to yeah. give Robin 10, 20 grand, you know, you're more than welcome yeah, to Yeah, won't go away. I'm always willing to take any money available. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I'll shout out uh, l Style start for, first of all, part of the Magnificent Nine team with l Style. Very good company. Happy to have them on board. Um, Darts Performance Center makes my darts. Um, the Woodpecker Bar in Ashford does great stuff for darts around Ireland anyway, and also sponsors me. So shout out to Alan and Micklock who kind of work with me there. Um, Kevin McGrail in Event Central. A big thanks to him. And personalised shorts, Sean Ryan and Joanne, they make my shorts for me. So, yeah, big yeah. thanks to them. Epic. Robin, it's an absolute pleasure as always. I'm absolutely sweating for November because my baby girl's due in November. So, although it's all great, I hope she comes a bit early so I can get down to play because I never miss it. Um, <laughs> but it's an iconic tournament. Uh, we'll see you down there. And, of course, we'll, um, we'll keep an eye on all your, all your future stuff as the years go on. We'll get you on regularly as well. And of course, my yeah. camera team, uh, for all the fans out there, are back in the studio. So look, we're going to travel around Ireland again, finally get people back on camera rather than Zoom. So Robin, we will call up to you. I'll give you a game. Uh, you'll probably destroy me, but look, 
we'll give you a game and it's an absolute honour so thank you very much Great. Thanks a million for having me on and best look at the baby anyway. <laughs>